I was astonished to learn, recently reading Philip K. Dick's 1962 book, The Man in the High Castle, that one of the book's most outlandish concepts, the emptying of the Mediterranean Sea, was not the author's original and fictional idea. In actuality, this wild notion preceded the book by a number of decades, and it was the focus of a very genuine and well thought out proposal by an eccentric German architect called Hermann Sogel. Hermann Sogel, who first proposed a large engineering project intending to drain the Mediterranean Sea in 1929, claimed that while it be seen as a ridiculous idea of science fiction, such an endeavour would be completely rational and immensely helpful. Sergal argued that extensive Mediterranean damming and draining may boost food production in Europe and Africa, boost the continent's economic health and even avert future conflicts. But how could this be achieved? And more importantly, why? Sergal published a paper outlining his thoughts in 1929, his work titled, quote, Lowering the Mediterranean, Irrigating the Sahara, the Panopera Project, is where he initially described it under the name Panopera Project. Later, in 1932, he expanded on his concepts in a book named Atlantropa, under which the concept gained additional notoriety. Simply put, the Atlantropa project recommended damming the Mediterranean Sea at numerous crucial locations in order to reduce its level by as much as 200 metres. The Straits of Gibraltar, which divided the Mediterranean from the rest of the world, would be crossed by the biggest and most significant dam. Alongside this, the Dardanelles would be cut off from the Black Sea by a second dam. There was also plans for a third dam between Sicily and Tunisia, dividing the Mediterranean in two and allowing for various water levels on either side. Large amounts of hydroelectric power would be produced by each of these dams, and new fertile land would be created along the whole Mediterranean coastline as a result of the lowering of sea levels. This land could then be colonised and farmed, feeding the need of several European nations for territorial expansion, increased food production, living space and economic growth. Sergal and his supporters' publicity material included plans, maps and scale models of several dams at new ports on the Mediterranean. There was also plans for a 400 metre tower on top of the Gibraltar Dam, sketches for a pan atlantropa power grid and even provisions for the protection of Venice as a cultural landmark. Sergal believed that the production of power while simultaneously creating additional land was a win-win situation that would benefit all of Europe. He also had a response for anybody who questioned the absurd scope of the project, which he estimated would take around a century to complete. The enormous quantity of labour needed to construct his dams would permanently end Europe's unemployment crisis. But of course, what about little old Venice? Well, Sergal had you covered. A canal connecting Venice to the sea through the recently emerging lands in the old Adriatic Sea was among the further engineering projects mentioned in Sergal's ideas. This canal would have extended the Suez Canal in order to compensate for the change in shoreline and sea level. Later, he also suggested building many sizable lakes in the Sahara Desert, which he felt would breathe life into the area and open up more chances for agriculture. Finally, a significant transportation route would pass via Italy and the now adjacent island of Sicily, spanning the distance to Tunisia, establishing a road and rail connection between Africa and Europe if a third dam was built between Sicily and Tunisia. However, the motivations behind Hermann Sergal's proposals for draining the Mediterranean Sea went beyond only producing power and creating additional farmland. The idea of Lebensraum was central to German political thought at the time Atlantropa was created. According to Lebensraum, Germany needed to grow in order to live, acquiring new resources and giving the German people a larger dwelling area. It was through Lebensraum that Adolf Hitler was inspired to conquer Poland and Russia, but as a fervent pacifist, Sergal hoped that his project would give Germany and other European nations the room they needed to grow while averting future conflict. In contrast to fighting, Sergal envisaged a Europe cooperating for a common objective and coming together peacefully. Thus, the Atlantropa movement was characterised by four central constants across its many decades. Pacifism, with its promises of peaceful technological usage. Pan-European cooperation, with the project viewed as an opportunity to bring a war-torn Europe together. Eurocentric attitudes towards Africa, which would eventually join with Europe to become Atlantropa. And the world is divided into three blocks by neo-colonial geopolitics, America, Asia, and Atlantropa. However, Sergal's proposals were not supported by the political establishment. The Nazi party decided to overlook Atlantropa in favour of more quicker and more viable plans. Hermann Sergal's views on a peacefully unified Europe and the averting of World War II may seem progressive, but from an African viewpoint, his vision would have seemed considerably less utopian. Even though the project's goal was to make North Africa productive, it was for Europeans, not the native African population. Sergal, who had a colonial mentality, saw Africa to be a colonial possession of his unified Europe. 
He really used the term Atlan Tropa to allude to a union of Africa and Europe into a single supercontinent and superpower, a superpower that solely served the interests of its European citizens. Sergal's theories gained a lot of traction during World War II, although the Nazi party never took them seriously. The Atlan Tropa project was once more taken into consideration after World War II, as the victorious allies sought to bring peace and unity to a war-torn Europe. However, the cost of reconstruction made such an ambitious project far too expensive, and the development of nuclear energy meant that the potential for hydroelectric power was largely overlooked. Hermann Sergel would sadly pass away in 1952, and his long-beloved Atlantropa Institute was dissolved a few years later in 1960. But of course, that's not the end of the video. It's only the beginning of the greatest part of the video, the part I assume you are here to watch. So here are a dozen reasons why Atlan Tropper is and continues to be a terrible idea. Reason 1. The drained old seabed would not be suitable for agriculture on its own, and would require extensive treatment. Much of it would be useless hypersaline desert. However, there is a reason why this is the first reason, because well, it's the only one in this list that has actually become true, and is technically possible. A similar problem arose when the Dutch dammed a portion of the North Sea in order to build an entirely new province, now known as Flevoland. Obviously, you can't grow land made from salt water, can you? It turns out that with very little human intervention, the soil was suitable for agriculture in just a few years. It is now the best agricultural region in the country. The reason for this is that as long as salt water can flow out of the soil and be replenished by fresh water, the problem essentially resolves itself. Reason 2. The economies of coastal settlements around the Mediterranean would suffer. Their state would be similar to the destroyed fishing village of Moynak in Uzbekistan following the receding of the Aral Sea, but on a far bigger scale, affecting three continents and hundreds of millions of people. Reason 3. Many bird migratory routes would be significantly hampered, owing to the loss of coastal wetlands and deltas. Alongside this, other sea creatures would get trapped in one of the new sea zones, unable to enter or depart the Mediterranean. Reason 4. The remaining seas would become more salty, harming ecosystems and concentrating pollution. Reason 5. As a result of the rapidly moving shoreline, almost every coastal habitat in the Mediterranean would be badly affected, and many species would effectively go extinct. Reason 6. 
Throughout much of Europe, North Africa and Middle East, weather patterns would change radically. Desertification would occur as a result of less evaporation from the Mediterranean as well as less rain for existing agriculture. Reason 7. The amount of concrete necessary to build the dams and associated infrastructure would use an incredible and horrible amount of resources while emitting an equally horrific amount of CO2. Reason 8. Getting ships past a series of locks at the dams and barriers would make the voyage longer and more expensive. Not to mention the traffic, and keep in mind that currently the Suez Canal lacks locks but still has substantial traffic. Reason 9. Who will be the owner of the new land? This cannot possibly lead to conflict between those countries who share maritime borders, or those who just have disagreements in general. And imagine if it was made at the time it was created. Imagine the conflict between Italy and Yugoslavia. Unless they expect a German government to take control of the entire continent. Hmm, I wonder. Reason 10. All of the coastal deltas, including Egypt's Nile Delta, which is home to tens of millions of people and is one of the world's largest river deltas, would effectively be ruined and dried up. Reason 11. Every port in the Mediterranean would have to be extensively refurbished, costing billions of dollars, not to mention the loss of trade while this refurbishment is under place. The twelfth and final reason. The plan called for countries to leave their distant colonies in order to double down on genocide and colonialism, particularly in North Africa, which was viewed as a rightful expansion of European rule. And so, to conclude, and to put it brutally, the entire Atlantropa project was a somewhat blundering and phantasmical attempt by a German architect to unite Europe. However, the plan never saw the light of day and was immediately shelved after his death. And also keep in mind the minuscule, atom, water bear sized chances this thing had of being real compared to the catastrophic impacts it would have on three continents and the lives of billions of people. In retrospect, the Atlantropa project was not a singular occurrence. Today, enormous hydroelectric projects such as the Three Gorges Dam in China and the Atipu Dam in South America are being built all over the world with unexpected consequences for people and the environment. So while the idea is completely and utterly absurd, it was not the fault of the Nazis. But don't worry, there are still plenty of other things for which they should be held accountable. This has been me, Jack, and please comment your favourite damn down below.